Greetings, it's Langsor again. Have you ever wanted to play an absolutely ADHD, ADHD rogue that just jumps around all the time, never stands still, and does, does all his damage? What's his wand? Oh, man, I can misladle, hell yes! And uh, exalted? Okay, damn. You guys witnessed some greatness. Basically, just jumping around all the time with this build, doing a lot of damage. As you can tell, I'm not even level 100 with this build, I only just started recently. Also, I want to mention, this is not my build, it's from Max Roll, but I wanted to share it with you guys because it's insanely fun and crazy. If you ever wa went, wanted to went, went for a... wanted to went for? wanted to go for a fast-paced build that isn't too expensive, it's really only two uniques, which is the, the same dagger twice, basically. As you can tell, I'm just jumping around all the time. I'm using pretty much all my abilities, so it's also a very active build. So if you just want to chill, this is not your build. I'm going to give this to you right away. Um, it shreds easily. This is level 60 because it's already doing so much damage in the monoliths. It's all an, a breeze. Even the bosses are absolutely easy for me. I will play this to the empowered monoliths, most likely. I haven't even used my smoke bomb here, which is a nice damage addition as well for bosses because I don't even need it here. But with bosses, you pretty much use all your attacks except for the decoy, I guess. But, but you can tell the shredding here. I'm not even doing much other than right clicking and keep casting shift all the time. That's what we do. Just constantly casting shift. Um, yeah, it all sucks. And the dancing strikes. This entire build is movement based. This is where you gain most of your damage from. And as you can tell, the shift is constantly available. Cooldown is 2.2 seconds. And you even want to look to increase this more with reduce cooldown, affixes you put on your legendaries or whatever. Or on your uniques rather. To make this even stronger because um, the shifting is that creates a lot of damage for us. Mostly done, honestly, with the Umbral Blades, but they are these spinning things, but they are created by the shift automatically, and they do so much damage. You can even cast the Umbral Blades yourself, but I'm gonna, gonna show you in a second how to... Actually, let's just do it right away, how to play this, okay? What you do is, as I said, you jump in with shift, you keep right-clicking for your dancing strikes. Whenever shift is ready, which I didn't do yet, you just keep shifting again. And what you want to do is you want to shift through the enemies, because what the these two daggers do is they reduce your shift distance. As you can tell, it's very, very short. I can only shift this far. But it's not to cover ground, it's actually to go through enemies, create the umbra blades by shifting. Where you leave, you create an Umbral Blade, as you see. So you won't just shift back and forth in the enemies all the time while you dance around with your right click. Then you create an Umbral Blade this way, you see them down here. And the key thing now is, if you cast this yourself, and the third time when this symbol appears, you recall them back to you, right? You don't want to do this, okay? You don't want to use the recall method. You can cast it twice. This creates two and uh, two and then four. And then you do nothing. It's just keep doing it with your with the shift. See? Uh, you, you never want to recall them. Um, because then you actually lose a lot of damage. Because as you see, they are shredding this guy easily, no problems. You don't even need to do much there. Oh, that's a lot of cast speed. Nice. So that's the idea with it. You shift in, you attack with Dancing Strikes, you can just keep right-clicking it, you don't have to constantly just keep right-clicking, then shift again. Basically, you just shift back and forth in the enemies all the time. So you create these Umbra Blades, and you also do the Shadow Cascade, which isn't even on our bar, but this does a lot of damage as well. Um, as you see, these things that are splitting out, they are also created by your shadows, or shot by your shadows, so it's double the damage. So that's just insane. The smoke bomb gives us a lot of nice additional buffs, which you want to have when you are fighting um, bosses. And the great thing is because if you do smoke bomb and we can shift within the bomb, because our shift radius is so small, we can just stay in the bomb while shifting and doing all the damage. So that's just 
Super, super great. Again, absolutely phenomenal guide by Max Roll, not by me. But uh, so I don't claim that I made this build, the ADHD Rogue, but I want to share it with you guys because it's just so good. So let's first look at our skills. They're not even maxed out. I'm going to put them below what you want to like the, the build, what you want to max out. And there's even way more description in there. I'm not going to do it in my own on on the SC Parkour. I'm sure going to give you the max roll build. Very simple. You want to definitely go here, right? This build has also shadow daggers. If you don't know what shadow daggers do, it's very simple. It's pretty much like a dot, sort of. Like any attack. Like if one attack with dancing strikes, see, gives the enemy one shadow dagger stack. Okay? The enemy you hit with them. Once they reach four, all of them go into his flash and do this damage it says over here. It always crits. So these... This damage is insane. Also, added damage is applied at 340% effectiveness. Also kind of crazy. Um, so yeah, the shadow daggers are super strong, and you do this with the dancing blades. This is why you want to shift in, dance around with your dancing, or strikes it is, not blades, and do damage that way. Now the key thing is this. It's not really a key thing because the percentage is only 10%, but it's still good. You have a chance to auto-cast um, Shadow Cascade, which is this skill. The circular thing that shoots out these spikes while dancing around, so it's just... You want to have the synergy that you don't have to do much, it's all sort of all the cast, right? Area, uh, Shred Armor, that's all easy. Rhythm is an interesting one. I think this one is actually still bugged, but it's still working. When you hit at least one enemy, you gain a stack of Rhythm. And this gives us increased global damage, and um, yeah, for, for a short duration. So that's just more damage, because you're constantly hitting anyway, so that's just great. Also gives you dodge rating. Dodge rating is very important, or dodge in general, with this build. I'm going to explain to you in a second. And crits. This is very simple. You just want to have the Shadow Dagger, so Shadow Cascade, and more attack speed and damage for that. Because that's your main... It's zero cost. It's actually free cost mana, it doesn't matter. Just main thing. Now, one of the main damage dealers is the Umbral Blades, right? As I said, these are the spinning things on the ground. These ones, right? As I said, you can have two, and the third one recalls them. You never want to do the recall. You can... You, as I said, they are auto-casted by your shift, right? With a, which I just did. So you're going to have a bunch of these all the time. You can also cast them yourself in between, if you want, to even have more. But again, never recall them, because that just stops most of your damage. And it's very simple. You want to go down here. All these um, really just do that. They are spinning for longer in the, in the same direction, or in the same place, rather. That's the Blade Storm, Blade Storm Duration and Area, so more damage on more people. And Shadow Dagger, again. They also in inflict a Shadow Dagger, so you have a lot of Shadow Dagger crits. Now, Dust Shroud is also nice, the Dawnfall. When you, hit, when you hit one enemy with the Umbra Blades, you gain Dust Crowd. And Dust Crowd is... I can actually see it here properly, I think. Yeah, this one. Each stack of Dust Crowd adds 50 dodge rating and 5% chance to receive a Glancing Blow. Glancing Blow just means you get yeah, 34, 35% less damage. So the Shroud of Dusk is our tankiness. And the key thing is because we're gonna go later with Perfection over here. You want to avoid hits as much as possible with Perfection, because as soon you, you, like you get, you gain stacks of damage with Perfection, and as soon as you are being hit, you lose these stacks. So your dodge rating needs to be really high to never get hit, because you are a melee bruiser in the enemies. And this one is also key. Whenever one of your shadows expire, they leave behind an Umbral Blade. It's also nice, because this is a great synergy with this, where you create... No, wait, where is it? Um, I don't know where it is. Somewhere you create a shadow while attacking. No, it's in here, right? Yeah. And then um, they can leave an umbrella blade behind. Other than that, they also go for this, which I thought interesting at first because it's cold damage. But it's really not about the cold damage we care about. It's the freeze rate. So the umbral blades can also freeze the enemy, which is great, right? Freeze is always super powerful. Also chill. So this is this is very, very king. I might replay this at some point a little bit differently, but for now I'm just giving you the, the max roll build as it is. 
Shadow Cascade, as I said, we don't even have it on our bar. It's just cast all the time automatically. When you shift, and we're going to say uh, see this later, when you shift it is cast, it is sometimes cast by your Dancing Strikes and it does a lot of damage. That is because, over here, it throws piercing daggers at nearby targets, dealing throwing physical damage. More daggers, more damage, fine. And enemies with Shadow Dagger, again. So even more Shadow Daggers on this thing. Also, there's last long air, and here it's Shred Armor again and gives you mana back. And this thing is also key. Chance to apply frailty. Because we always... This always hits, right? This hits all the time because we're constantly shifting and casting it, see? You see these spikes coming out here? Around me when I shift? This is your Shadow Cascade, and it happens all the time because we're shifting around all the time, right? So, all the frailty debuffs, all the mana return, all the shadow daggers constantly happening. Super crazy. Now shift is very simple. You want to go down here first. After using shift, you use shadow cascade. Key thing. And this one. Oh yeah, this one is. You leave behind the shadow at the place you shifted from. So this also gives you the buff on the shadow, which leaves an umbral blade behind. This is sort of the synergy. So it always has the umbral blade, right? But also shadow cascade. Insane. This doesn't really do as much. And if we have more points, we could go for it. Um, Shadow Dagger, you already do enough with these, so don't really need it. Other than that, it's cool on recovery. We want to be shifting all the time, right? We gain movement speed buff because movement buffs our damage as well. Mana regain, invulnerable while shifting because we don't want to have any hits on us, right? And more dodge rating. And up here, we also have the threshold. That's, that's very nice. Because if you, as I said, if you shift through an enemy, like this, someone who stood here, they gain the unseen strike damage, hitting enemies along your path, right? And if you hit them along your path, you, ha you, you have a kill threshold, which goes up to 12%, I believe, or even higher than that. This is exceptionally great against bosses. Kill threshold is always king if you can have it. Because bosses, once he is below 16%, below you just shift through him and he's dead. You don't even have to fight. This can be the little difference in the end. So shift, super awesome. Smoke bomb is very simple. Longer duration. Bigger. Uh, frailty to enemies. This one gives you a silver shroud. Causing you to dodge the next hit completely. And gain wall per stack. That's just great for all dodge. And more melee damage, throwing damage. Throwing damage um, actually scales our Umbral Blade. We go with the items into scaling later. Dusk Shroud again. See? More dodging. And more, more Dusk Shroud. Very simple. So the build is mostly around these two. These are your main damage dealers. The Dancing Strikes does some damage, but it's mostly to keep dancing around and jumping around and hitting enemies and applying buffs and debuffs. Buffs for us, debuffs for the enemy. And these two do the most damage. And they are activated by shift and smoke bomb. So yeah, very, very crazy. Now for the passives. Uh, we don't have all of them here, but you're going to see it below. The key things are really, you want to have this, these two here maxed out. Because um, damage taken while moving way less and increased dodge rating. 25%, that's actually insanely a lot. Haste on hit chance, so you gain haste a lot. Sometimes we're zooming like crazy. Increased damage per 1% increased movement speed. Since we are so focused on movement speed, we also gain a lot of damage from that. Pretty nice. Dexterity health, obvious damage, attack speed, yep. Dual wielding, we need this. More dodge rating while dual wielding. And of course, more dodge, glancing blow. You know how it is. Very easy. Now the Blade Dancer. Again, melee damage, throwing attack damage. And movement speed, because movement speed is great for our, our skills. Dexterity, scales or damage, glancing blow again. This one's obvious. Dodge rating, throwing physical damage, melee physical damage, same thing as always. Dusk Shroud, as I said. Um, dodge rating, damage while at full health. We mostly have this anyway. Damage leeched, great. Silver Shroud again. And you want to go with the critical vulnerability, and I think we went with. I think this, right? Um, I, I would have to check where we go in later. And we also put a little bit into the Falcon. It's mostly the idea with the passives is very simple. And this is basically how you scale this entire damage. 
of this entire build. The biggest damage really is coming from the shadow daggers, right? That ailment you put on with your umbral blades and shadow cascade. And the shadow daggers, they scale with physical, melee and throwing attack. Flat physical damage does a lot here. And throwing attack also. So you want to go for physical throwing attack and dexterity is always great, but also melee. But physical, flat physical damage as well as throwing attack. And the key thing also is... One, one side note. Dancing Strikes does not scale with attack speed. It says it here. But Dancing Strikes deals 1% more damage. Because you're basically jumping around like this all the time. And attack speed doesn't make this faster. But it does get faster if you have cooldown reduction. Okay, cooldown reduction makes it faster. If it's less than 1.5, uh, then you attack faster. This is also how you can scale dancing strikes, damage-wise. But as I said, melee physical damage, or like just physical damage, and throwing attack damage, because the Umbral Blades are also throwing attack. So any throwing attack damage scales these as well. So you want to go with this. That's pretty, pretty simple in how you scale it for the items. Damn, what's all this? What's all this, huh? This is your main key weapon. I have a bunch of other uniques, you don't need them. The main key is you need the Smoke Weaver twice, okay? Without it, it doesn't really do as much. The reason is... The sec uh, like the last affix in this weapon. 25% increased cooldown recovery speed for shift. This really puts 50% down, so it's half as long in cooldown with both daggers equipped. So you're really fast on getting your shift up. It has a lot of melee physical damage, scales greatly with all damage. Blind on melee, fine. Dodge rating, insanely high. We want that, we don't want to be hit, right? And reduced shift and <coughs> shifted distance is also great, of course, for our jumping around all the time within the enemies. The Smoke Weaver is insane. If you can find it with LP like I have here, this one doesn't, but this one has. With LP on it, you want to throw on a crit multi, crit multiplier, for example. So your critical strikes are even crazier. You really scale the crit multi later, the critical strike chance is not that important. Crit multi is what does it. Um, now I have this. Because I'm still kind of lacking a really good rogue armor for some reason. This is actually a twink item I made because it's rank 5, you can tell. So this I use this usually on new characters, on alternative characters. But um, plus 1 to dex skills, dexterity skills, which is most of rogue skills, right? Dodge rating, movement speed, gain haste, effect of haste on me. Then, of course, resistances, armor, intelligence doesn't really do much, but this was just a random affix I had on it. This is great for me. So the Kestra you should have anyway. If you have it, it's great as a good starting armor for this. Uh, with all the dexterity skills, or you just go with an exalted rogue armor. Again, entire build link with all the items and what you can put on them, what should be on them FX wise is below, so check that out. Um, yeah, health. A key thing is, because we're very squishy, right? We only have 12,000 health at level 60, and the rogue generally has health problems. We do dodge, but we don't always dodge all the damage, right? So, you always want to look for, if you don't if you can't really fit things on it, it's health. Like in this case, it's dexterity and health. Very nice. Uh, this has 11% health, cold resistance, yeah, but also physical damage. Endurance and dodge rating, again. Critical strike chance, mana region. Nice, mana. Melee damage leash is health, also very nice. Throwing attack speed. I would love this to be throwing attack damage. The attack speed doesn't do much because we're not actually throwing the umbral blades, but that's what I had. But the dodge rating, again. I want it to be super tanky here. Yeah, this one I was very lucky with. Also, more movement speed, gain haste, and uh, all of this, but 11 dexterity. That's a great scaling for our damage. Um, I had this already, yeah. This one's also great. Throwing damage. This was a lucky one to be on the front of the erased. You might have these, right? These are very cheap to get. The front of the erased, the event of the erased, also the swaddling. You can just throw in these, they be they become with the weaver's will, right? They become legendary. So you might roll some good stuff with the rogue, which is just dodge, endurance, throwing damage, dexterity, 
You might be able to roll, roll some good things with these. Um, yeah. Amulet, dodge rating again, physical damage, crit multi. This was insane. So if you can get crit multi or physical damage up, always great on the items or on the defensive items, go for the dodge rating. And this one also, crit multi, 7 dexterity, elemental resistance, pretty insane thing. Pretty crazy. Very simple, honestly. These two are the these are the, the ones you need. Everything else, this is the only two uniques you really need, right? And so I think this is a very cheap, cheap budget build that can do a lot of content late game. For the idols, it's very simple. If you have these, wait, where is it? This one. The physical penetration with shadow daggers. If you have this... Put four of them in your idols if you have them. I don't have four of these. I have two. Yes. Uh, health and health gain on dodge. It's also nice. If you don't have it, just go with health. I mean, it says crit chance, which is fine. But health is then what you want. Health. 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 Dodge rating. Health or resistances. Whatever is missing for you. Very simple. Usually, I, in most cases, I build the idols very defensive. Because I put most of the offensive stuff on my offensive. <laughs> most of the offensive stuff I put on my weapons. Most of the offense stuff I put on my weapons. So, I usually do the defensive ones on the idols. But that's up to you how you do it. Um, but yeah, th these ones are great. If you have these, physical penetration with shadow daggers, that really supercharges your build again. Now, one great armor that is recommended in um, the Max Roll Guide is the Wings of Argentus, right? Which, actually I'm going to show you here. The guide. This one. Rings of Argentus. This is so incredibly rare. And almost impossible to find. Even less with LP on it. But it's, in, it's of course very great. Less damage taken while moving. Fine melee and cold attack. So this also gives you. Because they turned. Um, Emerald Blades into cold. So you actually get the buff from this. A lot of armor. Cold damage. This is great if you put stuff on it, but you likely won't have that. So this is not really necessary. Also because it's so super rare. It's so super rare. They also go with the Siphon of Anguish here. Because we leech um, gain movement speed and you leech health. I didn't go for this. I didn't like it too much. But that's up to you. You can play around with it. As I said, um, you can also play a low life, low life version. I might even try this if I ever find this fucking item. So definitely check out the guide. It's very great. Lots of good stuff. Yeah, physical penetration with Shadow Daggers, 150%. If you ever find this, the chance is... So, it's like one in a trillion to find this with LP on it. It's the rarest item in the game, by the way. <laughs> so, yeah. I might try a low-life one. It looks like fun as well. But, yeah, anyway. Um, check out the build. It's great. This is so much fun. This thing. And really, it's the ADHD. If you are bored of just sitting around waiting for your minutes to do everything, then you run this because then you have to do everything yourself. It's very simple. You shift in, you start hitting, you shift again. Start hitting. You see all the umbral blades down there. Just always shift in. That's what you do. Okay, that's all some bullshit. A rogue. Explosive trap. That's a good one. So that's what you do. Very simple. Shift in. You can sometimes even cast your umbral blades yourself if you want. You want to group enemies as much as possible if you can. Because you, then you do a lot of AoE damage to all of them. And since you dodge so much, because I almost didn't get any damage here. Um, the build is also very easy to play. So I like this a lot. It's a, a cheap build. You just need these two daggers, which are not that rare to find. Not that crazy to find. It's cheap. It's super powerful. It can do the eight game easily. The end game. Easily, no problem. Or even bosses, no issue whatsoever. Even on empowered monoliths, you can go to a pretty, pretty high corruption with this. You just gotta be a bit more careful with your dodging. But yeah, insane build by Max Roll there. Check it out. I love it a lot. And I will see you guys in the next video. Unless you have any more questions, then put them below. And like and subscribe and everything. You know how it is. <laughs>